It's been a while since I've done stand-up. I miss it. I miss it a lot. Um, let's see. I've been uh, having a pretty good weekend. I'm excited because uh, today, actually, my friend is coming back from two years of military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've been gone for fucking ever. And this is like an old-ass friend, you know, way back from school. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited. And I, I'm, I already have it all planned out. I'm gonna, I'm like, surprise him. You know, like, surprise! I like dick now, bitch! <laughs> but, no, see that, see that. We're good enough friends that they knew that already. In fact, they like knew that before I even knew. Like, that's how good of fucking friends we are. <laughs> so I'm super excited to, to see them again after two freaking years in just a little bit. Um, I went to TwitchCon. Yeah. I went to TwitchCon for the second time. Uh, first time was back in 2019, pre-pandemic. Holy heck, three years since I saw all my friends. And see, my relationship with Twitch is, I don't so much see it as like a video streaming platform, but more as like a video simping platform. <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, I do a lot of simping on Twitch. Um, and so TwitchCon was like simping, but but IRL, which was pretty cool. Um, and the whole time I was just like, oh my god, like this person's like so hot and so cute, and and like we got like got the hug and got the dance and got to spend quality time together. It was super super nice. <laughs> so got to simp up close, you know. Uh, um, let's see. I also got to meet with a bunch of friends, bunch of my friends, and seen them in so so long since the pandemic. Um, the first, my first stop was uh, O Girls, my friend O Girls. Um, <laughs> so we, we had hot pot, we've been talking about getting hot pot forever. Um, and, and, and this is like, you know, we've just been waiting like two, three years, pandemic years to get hot pot. And we finally got it. It was like a bucket list item, super, super great. It's so much fun. We caught up and everything. Um, at one moment, <laughs> cause I, uh, I, I've been, trying ever since I, I uh, decided I want to see if I can work at a trap cafe <laughs> in Akihabara in, in Tokyo, Japan at some point, or just like, you know, be qualified enough. I've been working on like my skincare and my nails and everything. And so when I went to TwitchCon, I, I, I you know, did a little something, just like a coating of something. And old girls noticed <laughs> my nails. And I was, I was like, ah, oh, you, thanks for noticing. It reminded me of that, like, K-pop lady from the K-pop uh, skincare uh, face shop. Um, when, when that K-pop lady was like, oh, wow, you're, you look so young. And then I proceeded to buy everything that she had inside. So if, if, it was a very dangerous situation for me. If, if my friend Ogros wanted to sell me on, like, any sort of skincare products, I, I would have just bought their entire stock. Yeah. Um, I did some dancing. I'll talk more about the dancing in a bit. Um, later that night, I met up with an old friend, Lam, dancer friend. We uh, went to get ramen and... Uh, we went to get ramen <laughs> and... Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. My therapist has been on strike. <laughs> For I think like three weeks now. My therapist has been on strike for three weeks. Um, so, and it's been like two, three, four months since I last saw them. And, and every time I go see them, right, it's like super, super helpful. Because like I got all these like amazing anger issues. <laughs> um, and also depression and anxiety and, and whatnot. I write a ton of songs about them. That's where they all go. Well, that's not where they all go. Some of it comes out like in here and like just in day-to-day -day life. And I feel sorry because, like, <laughs> Bill, Bill Burr, uh, let me tell you Bill Burr's story instead of my own, because it's too embarrassing to talk about my own. So Bill Burr um, is a stand-up comedian I really admire. And he does a lot of stand-up and, and a podcast, too, and he, and he sort of turns his anger into jokes and the things that people can laugh at and make people smile and laugh. And I really admire that. Um, his childhood is... I, I, I drew some similarities from his childhood to mine. He was also abused as a kid. Um, and as a kid, he lived with a lot of fear as a child. Fear of 
his parents, right? Fear of getting beaten or, or just abused and, and uh, <laughs> just mentally, emotionally, physically destroyed, right? Um, and I related to, all of, uh, to, to a lot of that, all of that. <laughs> um, there was even one part in the special, it was like, uh, my, I, you know, it was so bad that like, you know, my siblings and I, we grew up with physical ailments, you know, as, as like, you know, our body was trying to cope with that abuse. And yeah, I have that too. <laughs> So I really relate to Bill Burr, and he has a daughter now, and um, his whole like goal and purpose in his life, I could say, just generalizing, is like to not pass that curse down, right? So like, but there's only so much we could do, <laughs> right? We're only human. There's only so much we could do to like filter down that curse. We can't get rid of it completely. I don't think I want to try. I want to keep trying to do that, but you know, it's hard. You know, I got to knowledge is hard to, to to completely get rid of that curse. So it's sort of like you filter it, right? It's like these iterations. You try to get better and better as the generations go on. So like if you know, my parents gave me this big old, you know. So if, okay, I'll talk. I'll talk about Bill again. So Bill, the big thing was like uh, Bill's dad, or or all his siblings and himself. He was afraid of. Uh, his parents, or his father, in, in his case, right? Um, every time the dad would come home, they were like, oh shit, like, dad's, dad's coming home, like, we gotta, like, get the fuck out of here, or, like, we're about to get beat, or something like that. So, him having a daughter now, he's like, um, like, the least I could do is, like, make my children not afraid of me, right? He still flips out, right? Like, he'll be in the kitchen, the kids will be in the, li in the living room, and... And, and he'll fucking like flip out over this fucking toaster, right? Like not fucking working. He get a work, work call on a weekend or something, right? His phone, and the phone is not fucking working. He'll go, fuck, motherfucking fuck shit, cunt, right? Sound familiar? That's what, exactly what I do. Um, so he at least tries to like not direct that anger at his kids, right? And just pass the curse. He's, he still has that anger, but he tries to like yell out the phone instead. <laughs> And and I really relate to that too, um, like there's just little triggers that I have, just from like surviving my childhood. Everything in my life must be perfect, right? In order for me to survive, everything in my life has to be clean, perfect, spotless. You know, sound amazing, look amazing. The experience, the quality, everything has to be perfect because otherwise I would fucking get murdered by my mother. <laughs> um, so this anger, these triggers, this, this root of it all is still here. I mean, the best I could do is not pass it down and abuse other people as much as I can. I'm working on it. And my fucking therapist is on strike, so <laughs> work on it as fast as I can. Um, so man, just every fucking time... My goddamn roommates make noise when I have when I'm on mic when I'm singing, when I'm trying to do stand up. Uh, I guess those are the only two times I have a mic on. But yeah, oh my god, it fucking pisses me off. Dirty dishes. I talked about dirty dishes before, right? Um, and I know I'm not gonna get my ass beat because, you know, I'm a fucking psycho, so I can defend myself. But but no one wants to beat my ass anyways here. And, and I'm on the opposite side of the country as, you know, the parents who would beat my ass. So, but, so, so I just, I just end up like, like before, before therapy, I used to just like end up muttering to myself and just like growing tumors. But now I just sort of like let it out. I try to let it out like somewhere else. But see, the thing is, we don't live in a very big house. <laughs> so, so, so as much as I'm trying to filter my psycho, it still bleeds through like very clearly, I think. Um, I'm trying to be objective about it. I have a lot of like self-hate and I'll like, you know, beat down on myself a lot. But at the, at the same time, it's like important to like, you know, <laughs> try to be honest with myself too. So anyways, that whole tangent was uh, me getting pissed off because my <laughs> roommate was just now, <laughs> as, as I was starting uh, this, this little stand-up thing, uh, making fucking noise again. So now that, I, now that I turned it into a little story, uh, I feel better now. So, going back to ramen. <laughs> Let me get something to drink. Hello. Man, but good for my therapist, man. They, they deserve better pay. They deserve, you know, more people to help them out. Um, I'm glad they're on strike, but at the same time, like, fuck you. 
<laughs> Could you not have gone on strike like the week of my appointment? <laughs> I think I think like the anxiety that that caused cuz like going into the appointment, my plan, I was feeling great. My plan was just going to be like, "Hey, you know, I think just a check in. I think I'm doing good. We can meet back again six months from now, which is my birthday, which is when I want to kill myself. And 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 literally like the day, I think it was like the day of or the day before my appointment, um, they were like, "Yeah, we're all on. They're they're all on strike." And just like the anxiety of that, like I was doing fine in my life, but just knowing that my therapist was on strike was like, "Oh shit! Like like, am I gonna die now?" <laughs> so. So I've just been dealing with that, yeah. Um, okay, so takoyaki. So, Lamb's a fucking psycho, too. Uh, <laughs> we grabbed ramen. It was a great old time. We're catching up. It was awesome, right? They're doing great in life. I'm super happy for them. And they ordered this, uh, this like, appetizer. Takoyaki. It's like octopus balls. Except there was a twist. The takoyaki, it was like takoyaki Russian roulette. Yeah. I leave it to the Lamb to think of some, you know... <laughs> If I order something fucked up like that, basically there were eight takoyaki balls, and one of them was fucking stuffed with wasabi, right? So, and we wouldn't know which one's fucking stuffed with wasabi. So I go in, we so we just like go one by one, right? Like Russian roulette, um, except instead of like bullets and a gun, it's like you know try not to get the takoyaki with the with the fucking water wasabi. I, I lost, I lost. <laughs> I got I got the wasabi on like the second try, um, but it's okay. I'm like professional Asian, so I can handle wasabi. <laughs> um, leave it leave it to Lamb to think of something fucked up like that. Um, last TwitchCon, uh, we we were what were we getting? We were getting like we were getting uh, chicken wings, uh, chicken drumsticks, like Korean chicken, fried chicken, and, uh, and 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 like I like my like soy garlic, you know, honey flavor, like you know mild flavors they uh the place that we had chicken had like this uh, challenge where you can it's like spicy challenge have you ever seen those like at chicken places super spicy extremely spicy like deathly nuclear spicy they got that and they couldn't walk for the rest of the day they were limping like this the whole fucking day as we were getting ice cream and crisps so (laughs) that's that's lamb um my second day at twitchcon uh I uh, met up with uh, some dancer friends, Ron, Verz, Cab, and we went to this uh, sandwich place. It was called, I forget what it was called. It was like Japanese sandos, right? We did a sandwich. Um, and the weebs love a good, you know, uh, Japanese English word. So, you know, I, I, we, were, we were sitting down, we were eating it, right? And, and, and they were eating it, Ron, Verz, and Cab, those guys, they, they were eating it. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing we've had all TwitchCon. And I'm like, I'm like, really? This is, you know, I mean, this is, like, I'm a foodie. <laughs> I cook good food. I go Yelp good food places, right? Like, I travel to countries to eat good food and wander around adventure to find good food in dark alleyways. Like, that's, that's, that's me. And I'm like, oh, this was okay. <laughs> this was all right. I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely, like, above mediocre, right? It's all right. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, They've been eating white people food all week. So then I felt sorry for them. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I'll upgrade it from, from all red to pretty good. Um, I went to the park to cipher. And um, hang on. Just to explain the white people joke, because people love it when you explain jokes, right? So here's my theory, which I heard on conspiracy radio, which I totally believe. You know, it, it's true. The reason why... Uh, white people colonized all around the world was because their food was so bland, right? Like they lived in friggin' like Great Britain and Ireland and all those like northern, you know, European places, you know, all they could grow is potatoes. So of course they'd have to like colonize like friggin' India, right? For all the friggin' spices and Asia and, and, and <laughs> anyways, let's move on. I don't know where I'm going with that. Went to the park. I got more racist stuff to say. So we went to the park. <laughs> And um, we were ciphering, we were dancing in a circle, right? Playing music, having a grand old time. What's crazy is the people, <laughs> had, Bob's like says, I uh, had to go off to America to get potatoes first. Wait, was that true? Oh my God, that's so sad. What did you guys eat before then, then? <laughs> Water? But 
But actually, the potatoes, I, I went to Ireland. The potatoes in Ireland are amazing. Like anything potato. They're, they're stew. They make bread out of potato. It's amazing soda bread. I love it. I freaking love the potato. They know how to do fries, right? Fish and chips, fries. I, oh, I freaking love it. But um, <laughs> I'm at the park. We're at the park. All right. So we're, we're dancing in a circle. And I, I'm so used to like... So, so when you go across the country in in the U.S. at least, you it's it's this hot pot <laughs> of uh, um, cultures, right? And 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 different places, right? The culture, the attitude, people, right? The hospitality. When I lived in the South, they had really like amazing Southern hospitality. People were really nice. Right? When you walk down the street, you know, and, and people would like nod at you and go, oh, "Good day," right? or "Hello," or "Good morning," "Good afternoon," right? Like, have a nice day, right? Like, just just the human to human sort of interaction. Um, where I live now, it's a lot colder. Like not not temperature wise, but like the the culture, right? Like you know, everyone's just a stranger. And it was crazy in San Diego. We had like multiple instances of people walking up to us while we were dancing. The first one was this kid, like this tiny ass, actually probably as tiny as me right now. <laughs> this kid. Um, we were like eight years old, right? Eight-year-olds could, we were playing music, we were dancing, and this eight-year-old kid just like jumped in and started like freaking, you know, break dancing, you know, sort of kind of moves. And, and the crazy thing is like, they were hitting everything on the right beat. They were interpreting the beat, right? Like, oh, this is the part where it's like, you know, where it's cool, right? This is the part where I, like, I do the drop, right? Like, honestly, that kid's musicality was like better than ours. <laughs> It was insane, the freaking kid in San Diego. Um, we were playing this, uh, after that, we were playing this uh, Indian song, you know, like the, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, I don't want to be racist. So we were just playing an, an Indian-like song, and this Indian guy in, in this, uh, I think it's a turban, just, like, came up, and, and, and you know, at the moment, right, it was just, like, maybe one or two, three, four people dancing, and other people were maybe, like, chatting, right? It was sort of, like, the middle of, of our dance session, people were hanging out, chatting, sitting down, and this Indian guy, just like when the music was playing, just came in and started doing like freaking Rasputin, you know, whoa, 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 it was amazing, and then everybody like saw that, and we're like, whoa, and we started like hyping him up, and like surrounding him in this circle, like this crowd, it was freaking amazing, and then this, uh, this third person, we were dancing, we're dancing in the circle, the circle's over here, right, and then I just, off the corner of my eye, I see, I see my friend Riku, uh, dancing on the side with someone, and it looked like they were like duo dancing with someone, like with their arms out. But it was this, this granny. <laughs> Ricky was dancing with this granny off to like 90 year old little like granny off to the side, and and the granny was like having the time of her life, right? And her kids and grandkids were all there like looking at the granny. You know, she was like you know leaning into everything, and and I thought I thought Ricky was just like trying to do a dance with this person, but it, I, then I realized, I was like, oh, no, she's just like, he's, uh, Rika's just like safeguarding the granny, so we don't have like a help, I fall and I can't get up type of incident, so it was, it was so much fun. Oh, I got to see so many people dance again, which is amazing, like Ron and Viz, and I don't want to call everybody's names, let's all just be boring, but I got to see some people dance for the first time, like IRL, in person, I got to see Lulu dance, um, and I'd only been able to see them dance like uh, in their YouTube like 30 second clip. They did this like sub goal thing, and it freaking like blew my mind. And yeah, like who who would have guessed I'd be able to see like Twitch streamers I admire uh, <laughs> at TwitchCon <laughs> when you're when you're 90 and you don't care anymore. That's right, Bob's Legs. Um, I'm saying Bob's Legs only because like. I'll just go back to saying Tim. I don't know why I'm saying it. It's like I'm conscious that there's a camera here. And then if I just react and I watch this later, it'll be like, oh, who am I talking to? So then I feel like oh, I got to read the whole thing. But it's like, I don't, okay. Hi, <laughs> Tim. And then later that night, I went back. Uh, Sweet and I were dancing. And this random saxophone guy walked up. We were dancing on stage because, you know, I like the attention. <laughs> And, they, and then this random guy with a saxophone walked up and just started playing. And the first song that they played was like a minute, minute and a half. It was perfect. And I, I it was, you know, sadly I took the whole song. And normally what you're supposed to do is like take, take, you know, half the song and give it to the other person, or take a third of it, give it to the other person. Um, 
so 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 that we're like okay no they still got some some more in them they're gonna do it again so they play the second song the saxophone guy and we're just dancing to the saxophone guy and the saxophone guy wouldn't fucking stop <laughs> it was like it was like and and i kept trying to make him stop playing i think i think it went on for like 5 10 15 minutes and the way I try to make people stop, I don't go, okay, hey, time to stop, 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 get off stage. Right? I, don't, I don't do that. Like, like, I'm an asshole, but like, I don't want people to know I'm an asshole. <laughs> so the way I make people stop is like, you know, I'll, I'll try to dance them into stopping, right? So we were like, I was like stomping my feet. I was doing a drum beat for his saxophone. And so I'd be like, pa 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 pa, and then and then I would like try to crescendo, pa 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 pa, right? To try like a bra, right? This sort of like, you know, because usually you listen to the drums to stop, right? The drums go, and then you climax, and then, and then you're done. He didn't listen to that. He just kept plowing through. I'm like, okay, so let me try to like dance him to stop, right? Blah, 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 blah. And then I walk off, and he's still fucking going. So then I start singing over his like jazz saxophone. Just random words, right? And then I go, I do hold along and I and he's not looking. His eyes are closed. He's just having the time of his fucking life. It felt like a Key and Peele sketch. Like I'm, like we're all just trying to get him to stop because we're exhausted from dancing to his like 15 minute symphony here. <laughs> we're Sam says we're, we're trapped in an experimental jazz hell. Yes, that's. But he was having so much fun. It was it was it was hard. Um, but we also got to dance to a lot of our songs too. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was, it was it was a fucking blast. We were vibing so fucking hard. I was sweating so much. I don't think I've ever been like that wet before. <laughs> and um, afterwards, we were super exhausted. This was like second day and pretty much my last day. Um, super exhausted. We decided to go like you know cook some food at the Airbnb, and like I'm. I'm super meticulous about cooking food, especially cooking food for friends and people, and especially if it's like the first time I'm cooking food for them, right? Like this is where the whole perfectionist thing, you know, sort of comes in again. It's like, you know, every, it's gotta be perfect. I wanna make the best experience I can possibly make, right? So I made my, you know, signature Italian sausage rice, right? For Gordon Ramsay recipe, and then I sort of turned it into my own, and perfect for after dancing you're super exhausted and it's healthy you get all the flavor all the nutrients all the vegetables right that people don't like to eat in there um and so i'm, I'm super meticulous right I, I'm, I'm tired as fuck i was like literally passing out and and so i'm struggling to stand and like you know i have to take like sitting breaks as i'm cooking and 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 sweet and lynn and, and riku are sitting in the back of the table and then finally i'm done i'm done i'm proud it wasn't a hundred percent, but it was like I'd rate it like maybe like 90, 85 percent, right? <laughs> no, no, like it was fully cooked, but like a like quality, like I give it a grade. <laughs> it was, it was good. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. So, so I'm very con self-conscious about that, you know, like like making food good. So, I sit down. We we are at the table. Everybody's got their bowls, right? Got their rice, and then Riku turns over to me like, I I'm actually a chef. And then like my, my face dropped, like, well, why didn't you tell me sooner? And then, and then Riku, Riku responds, because if I did, you make me cook. And I'm like, well, obviously. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, fuck you. And they're like, fuck you too. And then we ate and passed out from the food coma. It was great. <laughs> I'm gonna take a water break. Man, I was uh, writing this uh, sort of stand-up set. I I'm not really writing it. Like, it's just notes. It's just like lines of topics that I'll talk about. And I just at my boba, not my boba, but like I was at another boba place. My boba place got sold and turned over. And the new one, friggin' only open weekdays. Anyways, fuck that shit. Um, <laughs> so I was this other boba place having like nice lavender uh, milk tea. And <laughs> I'm just scrolling through my phone and I'm just like laughing to myself. I'm laughing at my own jokes, but I love laughing at my own jokes. I love like making jokes that make me laugh, like at watching it afterwards. Um, and, and not just because like, there's a whole psychology. Right? Like, it's not just because I'm afraid of not getting your approval 
right? Like a lot of people, like they're scared. Oh, I write a joke. Well, what if people don't like it? What if people don't laugh, right? So then they just go, you know what? I'm just going to write stuff that make me laugh, right? I'm going to make something that I want. And just to sort of like shield themselves from the fact that, no, you're actually like you actually want. <laughs> you're actually afraid of knowing if other people laugh. Um, but I'm not that. <laughs> um, I still don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> See, that's the difference between a normal person and a sociopath like me. I recently um, found out uh, there's actually a difference between a psychopath and a sociopath. And I found out which one I am. <laughs> so I watched this video and this like this asshole was talking about a brain and stuff. And but basically it boils down like the whole 30 minute fucking video boils down to a, so, a, a psychopath is someone who's born a psychopath. And they're born in a way that, you know, makes them exhibit psychopathic uh, behaviors, right? Like they don't really have empathy, they don't really understand how humans think and feel, which then lead them to like do things that other people, normal, you know, let's say normal people, think is irrational or doesn't make sense. But it makes sense to the psychopath. But the key there being like they're born with this sort of like chemical genetic thing. At least that's what the science says right now, so it's not 100%. But then again, I'm on the internet, I'm just talking to my ass, so don't trust what I say anyways. The sociopath is uh, someone who was born, you know, with the same, you know, with a similar like chemistry and genetics as a normal person, but they went through some trauma and their brain flipped a switch. And I'm going to say to defend my fellow sociopaths, the brain flipped a switch for survival, right? To survive the trauma, to survive the abuse, to survive the bullshit. <laughs> that we had to go through as a kid, right? Um, I'll just give you an example. Like, if I don't feel, I don't get hurt. Easy, right? Like, you ever just seen a kid who just constantly getting abused? They're just going to stop feeling so they don't get hurt, right? Easy. But when they grow up, they stop feeling and they do sociopathic things. So uh, that's just one example. I mean, there's a, there's a lot, right? Um, there's, there's like, you know, the friggin' the... the, 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 the uh, the, the, the banker cunts, right? The Wall Street assholes, uh, all the rich people, the CEOs, right? They go, I'm going to make other people miserable. I'm going to climb on top of them so I can be successful because I don't want to go back to living like shit or like I deserve all, whatever. Well, I don't know. I'm just talking about ass again. Sociopath. Uh, basically, so I realized I was a sociopath. And then I, uh, I very unsmartedly sent this video to Blizz while I was asking him to room with me, and I think that's why he didn't come. <laughs> so I made sure not to make the same mistake. I made sure not to send that sociopath video to, to Riku. So at least at least Riku was willing to room with me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, there's some other, another interesting thing, which is uh, a psychopath, because they're born as a psychopath, they also learn, just from experience, that being a psychopath doesn't really get them very far in life. Right, because you still, as a human being, you still need other people to survive. Right, to, you know, help you and and, and be with you and, and do stuff for you. So the psychopath will always try to blend in as a normal person, and that's what I was talking about about the eyes. Right, you could always tell a psychopath from the eyes because uh, they're they're a human trying to imitate another human. <laughs> you know, they're not being themselves because being themselves would get them alienated. Right, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you can spot this in, like, singing and art, too, right? Like, like it, it, I, I, I take it akin to, like, oh, I'm a singer, but I'm trying to sing like somebody else, right? And then you sound fake. It's just like that, but for psychopaths. Uh, a sociopath, however, like me, <laughs> likes to flaunt their sociopathy, right? And talk about it and, like, is proud of it, right? Because, um, cause, like, it's a, it's a trait, a skill I developed to, to survive. Anyways, enough about that shit. Um... So, wait, I remember why I told that story. I told that story because this next story is really going to show you what's, what's happening in my cuckoo brain. So I was at the park. I was having a lovely Saturday or Sunday. I went to uh, get like a little breakfast croissant, right? They didn't have seating over there. That's fine. I can improvise. I decided to go to the park, have a little picnic, right, with my croissant. I even got a donut. And the lady was so nice, she gave me a second chocolate donut. So I was, I was elated, right? And I'm starting to get fucking pissed again. But yeah, I got the two donuts. And um, 
I went to the park and I just sat in my car because it's, you know, cozy. There's no bird shit and stuff. <laughs> so I'm just looking out at this like pond and trees and stuff. And um, it's nice. It's really rare seeing like a pond or just any water in California <laughs> because of the drought. So it was really nice. Um, actually, was second known and actually winning. Yeah. Um, and I was just watching and I saw like I was just, you know, sometimes like life, right? <laughs> so I just look out at the trees, at how the breeze moves the, the tree leaves and um, the blue sky is beautiful, the, the water, right? The, the little sad ass fountain that they had because <laughs> it's still California. So, you know, even if you have a pond and a fountain, the fountain just like, you know, it doesn't go, you know, but it's, it's sort of like, like the tail end of your piss, like, like when you got like a little bit left, but then you also like segment it because you only got a little bit left and maybe there's some air in between. So you just go. Pss, pss, pss. <laughs> so anyways, there were also geese and ducks. That was the point I was trying to get to. It was like the geese and ducks living there, right? Because some asshole keeps feeding the geese and ducks there. So it's just littered with geese and ducks. And I was just watching them. Um, watching how the animals behave. Just the, the nature of things, right? And, and and it was interesting. Most of the geese and ducks were like asleep, just resting afternoon nap, right? And but one geese walked over to this one duck who was sleeping, chilling by themselves. And that goose walked up to that duck and just started like pecking, right? And like, you know, spreading their wings out. And as, as to like, be like, hey, g you know, get off my turf, fucker, this is my spot, even though there's like the whole park, right? Asshole, asshole goose, geese are assholes. Um, and then the duck was just like, holy shit, like what the fuck, because it just woke up, it was, you know, just like barely, you know, conscious and, and just started moving the fuck out of the way, sort of tripping over itself. Um, and then, and then, and then the goose just sort of like stood there in the spot relishing you know it's stupid victory and I started thinking like huh like in out in nature out in the jungle right out in the nature it's it's humans and and, and animals behave very very similarly there's not not there's not a huge difference because it reminded me of, of high school <laughs> my high school um I was the duck, right? Just minding my own business, hating my life, you know, <laughs> being a duck in high school. And then there's a random goose with like fucking small pee pee energy, right? Or something, right? With their own abusive parents comes to me with my abusive parents, right? And, and just like starts, starts bullying me. And I don't know what to do, right? Like, I don't know. I don't have any comebacks, right? I, I didn't start writing jokes until like, like a year ago. So, um, and I'm like friggin' scrawny, so it's not like I can like friggin', you know, buff them out. Um, so I just, I just moved the fuck out of the way the whole time. And then, and then the goose, the bully just, you know, takes my spot. Does whatever the fuck they want. And, you know, they just try to be happy <laughs> standing there. But the craziest thing happened after that. Yeah, I'm still on the goose and duck story. <laughs> And I'm still eating my croissant and, do and donuts. Craziest thing happened after that. This, uh, it's a park, right? It's a pond. It's next to a library, right? So families go there. And out of nowhere, I see a flash of bright pink. Bright pink. Like a, like a ball of like, you know, like Tron. Just bright pink fly into my, my, my vision here. Um... And, and it's just crazy, like flying around. And it's like the six-year-old little girl dressed in bright pink. And she's just having the time of her life running through all the geese and ducks, all of them. So all the geese and ducks are like, oh, what the fuck, right? Like this, this, this little pink fucker running around, right, disturbing all of us, all of us, all of them. And among all those, you know, geese and ducks that got like trampled basically by this little six-year-old girl in pink was the goose, the asshole. I'm sure they're all assholes, but that one particular asshole, you know? And, and it made me think, huh, like, 
this is this is this is like the circle of life you know this is like what what comes what goes around comes around and and i just had this like profound thought watching all of this unfold right all the geese and ducks are sort of like flustered and walking away from the little girl the little girl is super chill you have no idea she's just messed up all the other ducks and geese's day he was chilling by the pond, looking out at the pond like I was before, looking at that sad-ass fountain. And then I had this thought. I was like, <sighs> you know, I just had this like amazing, profound revelation. And I should like walk up to the little girl and just push her into the pond. <laughs> And then I didn't. I had a great day. <laughs> and then I got. And then I got boba. <laughs> um, let me grab a. Let me grab. A, let me grab a drink. Oh, this next story is gonna be uh, told in a very hilarious timing. Because it's about my roommates, and my roommates just entered the room. <laughs> so, uh, um. It's going to be great. So the other sociopathic thought, I had talked about this earlier. I wasn't supposed to, but like I was so pissed, I just like jumped on it. So um, here's, here's the thought that I have, right? Whenever I'm like singing or, 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 or on mic, right? My mic is unmuted or I'm like doing stand-up, performing stand-up, right? <laughs> mic unmuted, right? I feel like... I feel like I'm uh, like Aretha Franklin, you know, performing in front of like thousands of people at Carnegie Hall, prestigious uh, concert hall, right? Only home, home to the best musicians and, 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 and performers and orchestras and, and actors in the world, right? Like, like befitting of the queen, RIP. So that, that's how I feel. I feel. I feel like I'm Aretha Franklin. I feel like I'm Beyonce. Right, uh, at the Super Bowl, and and friggin' you know I can I can ask Bruno Mars and uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay to eat my ass and they would do it. Right? <laughs> what was the point? The point. I feel like I'm this. You know, I feel like I'm Aretha Franklin at at Carnegie Hall, right? And meanwhile, every time this happens, and it happens every time, you see me you see me flip the fuck out every stream, right? Whenever I have my mic on. It's just, it's just normal. It's just nature, right? But I, f I flip the fuck out every damn time because um, of the stuff I talked about before. So imagine, you know, just the legend, you know, of, of, of music, Aretha Franklin on stage, and she's, you know, about to perform her number. There's a, there's a world-renowned pianist behind her, right? Getting ready, right? Relaxing, stretching his fingers, right? And, and she sings like the first note and she's just belted like, ah! right? And, and her, her, she doesn't even need a mic. And her voice like echoes through Carnegie Hall and stuns thousands of people at the same time. They all <gasps> hold their breath, right? In, in, in her stunning amazingness of Aretha Franklin. And from the side, up comes Aretha Franklin's roommate. Right? And just nonchalantly, with his dick out, walks up, <laughs> right? Butt ass naked, and starts to turn on the sink, right? And wash some dishes, right? <laughs> and goes beep, beep, boop, 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 right? And, and, and starts to like microwave a bur burrito or whatever the fuck, right? And, and freaking starts to have like a conversation with like the second roommate, also dick out, <laughs> walking in. <laughs> Again, Aretha Franklin, right? A pianist, concert hall, thousands of people, breath taken, right? And then just dick out, water running, beeps, beeps going in the microwave. That's how I feel. That's the fucking psychopath, I mean sociopath that I am, all right? <laughs> now you know a little bit of how I feel. Uh, but I'm working on it. I, like, I promise I'm fucking working on it. I, uh... I've, I've like, I think like 99% gotten over the dirty dishes. In fact, 
I like add to the dirty dishes now. Yeah, the kitchen is like a fucking, you know, hellhole. <laughs> and I've stopped doing the dishes, stopped doing any, any of that, just as, as like proof that I can. I just told myself at the beginning of the year, like when I flipped out, like just for the last time, I was like, I don't want to keep flipping out. I'm just going to like stop giving a fuck and just not, not try to clean up after other people's mess. And I'll see if I can do it for a year. And here's, here's, my, here's my logic. If I could do it for a year, if, I, if we can leave the kitchen as a swampy, landfill, gross, disgusting, maggot-infested, hellhole, shithole, I kind of like Sweet's Kitchen, but, <laughs> but not as bad. Um, but like that, um, and I could do it for a year, that, I think, is going to tell my brain and my body that I'm not going to get murdered if the kitchen isn't clean, which is why I flip the fuck out so I don't get murdered, right? So I don't get, I don't get a knife through my throat, you know? <laughs> so so, so it's, it's like October. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> not like Sweetie's Kitchen. No, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> the worst of mine is probably the best. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I love them to death. I don't want to put, throw them under the bus. Speaking of bus, um, I love Teslas. I love Teslas. I want to get a Tesla. I hate Elon Musk. I used to love him. That's besides the point. I love Teslas. I want to get like this Tesla Cybertruck. My dream is to go on a road trip in a self-driving vehicle that I can sleep in. I can literally like sleep in this Tesla Cybertruck, right? And I wake up in this like whole other city. That, that'd be magical, magical experience. And, and, and Miyobi showed me this like Tesla camper attachment where I could literally like cook in the back of my Cybertruck. I have a grill, right? Like a stove, everything, electricity, right? Like, you know, I, I can freaking, I can freaking like pull up a tent and just start VR dancing in the back, right? Under the tent, but then I have Wi-Fi and everything. Um, I love it. What I don't love are Tesla drivers. Yeah, Tesla drivers. And there's one particular Tesla driver. I'm getting into like the rant phase of my stand-up, so bear with me. <laughs> we'll come out of the rant phase, but for now, I need to rant. There's one particular Tesla driver, fucker, all right, that drove a car. And how do I know they're an asshole? Right? How do I know this guy's a fucking cunt? Because this cunt displayed his cuntiness, you know, in all its glory on his license plate. You wanna know what the license plate read? The license plate on this fucking Tesla cunt's car was called Why Smog. Ooh. Right? Everybody who pulls up to my ass can kiss my ass and read it. Hey, hey man. Why smog when you can be like me, model citizen Tesla cunt, huh? What? <laughs> Why, for whatever reason, don't you just do what I do, right? And just buy a Tesla and save the world like I am, you know, this hero over here. Because you evade taxes, let me tell you. Because you evade taxes and I can't afford health care, you cunt. That's why. That's why smog, all right? Oh my god, that fucker. That's just, I hate everything about that. Why smog? It's like, you think I want that? You think I want to not be able to breathe outside my own house? Motherfucker. Oh, but still, I still love Teslas. I hate all the people around the Tesla universe. Right? Like, if, if Tesla was, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I would hate all the superheroes, but, like, I would love, like, like the, the font size of Marvel. I don't know. A terrible analogy. Let's move on. I have another rant. I was, uh, just have money, right? <laughs> I was right, Tim. So, uh, the other day, fucking YouTube pissed me off. Uh, I was, I was watching YouTube, and my YouTube is a very sacred grounds, right? I spent my YouTube homepage recommendations, you know how YouTube has these videos that they recommend you, that, that, that you, you train over the years, right? I spent my time and effort and blood, sweat, and tears 
right? Training my YouTube algorithm to only show me what I like because I like having that fucking control, right? And making everything perfect and I only see <laughs> the fucking YouTube recommendations that I want and nothing outside of that because I'm a sociopath. But um, one day, and, 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 and look, look, you might ask Kanata, why don't you just like say not interested or don't show me this again, right? I could, or, or, YouTube can just not fucking do that at all, right? And show me the right fucking shit. But that's not the half of it. If it feels just like any random video, right? Any random video. And, 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 and let me tell you, so, so the videos I watch are uh, Jungkook, BTS, Jungkook singing, Jungkook dancing, Jungkook <laughs> You get the point, right? That's my YouTube feed. So anything that's not that, that's not Jungkook, is not supposed to be there. So, 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 so if it was any other like random video, even if it was like a cat video, I'd be fine. I'd just say like not interested or I'd open up an incognito window just to check it out, right? But YouTube fucking had the balls to recommend me a video titled Rice, How It's Made. Have at it. Have at it, Kanata. Have fun. You want to learn how to make rice? Enjoy. Motherfucker! I was actually, I was, I was literally pissed. I was livid. I was, I was, I was fucking livid over a YouTube recommendation. I was, like, I'm, I'm not able to, like, remember how livid I was, but pr I promise you, I, I was ready to murder someone over rice. <laughs> Damn says so just microwave it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> See, look, there's three, thing, there's three things, all right? There's the Ten Commandments, and then there's like the Three Commandments of three things you're not supposed to tell an Asian what to do. Number one, you're not supposed to tell them how to do math. Number two, you're not supposed to tell them about their dick size. And number three, you don't fucking tell them how to make rice. And me, of all the, you know, not like some whitewash college, college hipster fucking Asian. No, me. I fucking travel around the fucking world and eat the best food and try to learn it and cook it, all right? All right, I made a friggin' Italian sausage rice for my friends while I was exhausted. I make an awesome fried rice, right? I can tell Gordon Ramsay to fuck himself about fried rice. So fuck you, YouTube, for trying to teach me how fucking rice is made. <laughs> fucking YouTube. Bitch ass motherfucker. So many cunts. Fucking cunts everywhere. I wrote a song about that. Fucking cunts. Alright. I have this... We're, we're, I think we're more than halfway through. I think I got a few more. I just wrote in my notes. And this is how I really feel. It's, it's this idea, this thought I have. Or this question, right? I have this profound question in my head that comes in and out of my head every now and then, right, as I ponder the, the, the mysteries of the universe. And the question is, who the fuck makes a Discord server about themselves? Yeah. Have you seen one of those? <laughs> who the fuck makes a Discord server and, uh, about themselves? Like, hey, this is the Discord server. Hey, what's it about? Is it about like a common interest, like comedy or dancing or music or performing, right? Is it a convenient of people no, or, or like a dating community, right? Like, no, no, it's about me. <laughs> I'm your common interest. Enjoy me, right? Like, <laughs> like there's plenty of room for everybody. Just enjoy, folks. Just enjoy all of me. <laughs> See, See, I, I, I went a little overboard on that. I don't actually have a problem because I actually, I actually really enjoy those servers. Those are like my favorite server. <laughs> One, because I simp a lot, and two, it's just like it's a nice community. So I was going a little overboard just to tell the joke. See, but but here's how I truly feel. Discord servers are like dogs, right? Discord servers. This is how I feel like about about myself because I, I don't have a Discord server, and this is why. Discord servers are, are like are like dogs. You wanna. You, you, you don't want to have your own. You don't want to have your own dog, right? Like the 
taking them to the vet, right, getting them fixed, and having to walk them, like, at random hours, right, like, I, I, I hear my friend, oh, I gotta walk them, oh, oh, oh my, my dog has to go out and pee, I, I just, just, uh, my dog is sick, I'm so worried, right, I just, all that fucking headache that comes with getting a dog, right, Discord servers are exactly like getting a dog, are, are, are exactly like dogs, you don't really want to have your own, you, here's the secret, here, you, you want to find a friend who has one, right? And then just go over to their house and just play with the dog, right, for an hour. And then leave and not have to worry about it shitting and pissing itself uh, in your bed. So, all right. Speaking of Discord servers. <sighs> this is a, a bit of a hard topic or a story for me to talk about because it... It's kind of painful, but that's sort of like the reason why I do this is to like talk about painful stuff. Um, I was part of this Discord server, and I loved it. I loved it. It, and, and I loved and still love all the people there. And you, you know, probably anybody who's ever been part of a Discord server knows, um, it's not all. Unicorns and rainbows, right? Shit happens in every server. Uh, just because people are people, and people have different ideas, right? And think differently. So, bound to, you know, bump heads. So, it was this, uh, like, educational server, right? For learning something. And I'm not going to disclose too much because, you know, I don't want to do that. And I was part of that server to learn right? To learn something. And everybody was there to learn, right? Learn with each other, help other people learn. And it was great. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. I learned so much there. And I respect all the people there so much because they're so much better at me. And I still have so much to learn. But something happened. Something happened. The person who was the server owner, right? You, you already know where I'm going with this, right? The server owner up here at the top, the single person, um, grew displeased and decided, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm saying decide like he decided on a whim. No, I, I know they didn't decide on a whim, right? But they just nonetheless decided that they didn't want to do this anymore. They didn't want to do this whole learning and helping other people learn and bringing the community together about this thing that we were all learning. They didn't want to do it anymore. And instead of just like going inactive or like passing the baton to somebody else, right? Or just leaving, they took everything down with them. They said, it's all over. Not just for me, but for you too, right? I hope I made it clear enough while obfuscating what, it, you know, what exactly happened and who those people were. But you get the point, right? Like, it's over. Like that thing that, that we would do as the community and I would go personally go to learn, right? I would enjoy, I, cu I couldn't, I could not, I couldn't do that anymore because this person decided that they didn't want to do it anymore. So, it made me think. It, like, actually, th I, I wasn't pissed at the time, but like thinking about it now, I'm actually getting pissed <laughs> thinking about it in retrospect, like today. Um, it's kind of like, like me, if I were to go into a new neighborhood and, 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 and buying a new house, it's kind of like buying a new house, right? I'm Kanata, I bought a new house, right, in this beautiful neighborhood, right? And then a bunch of other people bought houses, right? And, 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 and there's like a Five Guys over there, there's a Target over there, right? There's a dance studio over here, of course, there's a dance studio. There's a nice park with freaking actual fountains and water there, right? Beautiful community built. And four years later, I got a job. Hooray! I got a job and I moved out of state, right, for this new opportunity. And so when I moved out of my house, I decided to burn the house down. 
and I raise the cornfields, and I pillage the town, and I rape the villagers. Yeah. Like, like, yo, we were having a good thing going on over here. Like, why don't you just get the fuck out? Like, it's like, if, if I can't have it, no one can, right? Hmm, well, go fuck yourself, all right? Go fuck yourself. I, I even, because I respect them a lot, I even went to them privately, and I still respect them a lot. I went to them privately, you know, as, as they were lighting up those Molotovs, right? <laughs> and putting the cloth in the beer bottles, right? Like just have this whole like tray of Molotovs ready to burn the, the town down. I went to them privately and I was like, hey, you know, they're like, they're like putting the Molotovs in. Hey, you know, I love this place so much. I, I, and, and, and I, don't, I don't even own a house here in this village. Like I just, I just rented an apartment for the summer for my, right? Like that's how little I'm a part of this. But I'm like, hey, I, I love this place so much. I'll, gosh, I'll, I'll, I'll even help like pay for your mortgage, right? I'll, I'll, I'll do like, don't burn, don't burn the house down. Like I, I, I'll, I'll do everything I can to keep the community and, and your legacy, right? Going and, 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 and thriving. And, 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 and not just me, like with all the other people who are way more competent than I am, right? We don't, we don't want to see it go. You know what he did? He, he stood up from the Molotov bottles that he was preparing and he grasped my lovely childbearing hips with both hands, spun me around <laughs> and fucked me in the ass too. Yeah, he, he threw a tantrum on me and, and made it look like I was the bad guy for trying to start my own thing or to try to keep the community going, try to do something, right, to, to keep things going. But see, here's the thing you didn't know. The other thing you didn't know is I'm sure for people like that, and again, I don't want to disparage them too much because I respect them for being the way they are, but I'm sure he felt good, right? You feel good when you talk down to somebody like that, right? Kanata, you're wrong. I'm right. Listen to me, right? <laughs> right? I'm the hero. You're the villain, right? I'm sure that feels good yelling at me like that, right? And, 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 and I'm sure it feels good thinking that he made me feel bad, right? Like, yeah, I, I told Kanata, right? I'm, I'm literally justice, right? I set the laws around here. But see, the truth is, I didn't really mind the butt rape, you know? Because like, I kind of I I sent for him. <laughs> and, and you know, like, when you get butt fucked by someone you have a crush on, it's like, even when it's bad, it's still pretty good, right? <laughs> ah, ah, I'm sorry, I lost strength in my, in my legs for a second there, at how dumb that joke was. Um, all right, that's that bit. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. This is the last bit. We're going to end on something silly. Um, I'm starting to realize, and again, going back to uh, my little boba cafe I was at earlier today and like laughing to myself while I was flipping through some, some bits that I wrote over like, you know, months or, uh, or weeks, right? I'm laughing to myself and I realize as I'm finding the jokes that I wrote, <laughs> I'm finding that like, a lot of them come from my DMs with my friend named Phoenix. Because <laughs> we just get, or, or maybe it's just me. Maybe the problem is me. I just get really ridiculous when I'm talking to Phoenix. Um, so here's an example. Um, so, so Phoenix and I, we both like dabble in, in songwriting. We both have a huge appreciation over music as the art, the, the storytelling, uh, emotional expression of it, right? Almost sound like Obama there, like, uh, so, uh, yeah, the art, and, uh, yep, yeah, and the taxes, and, you know, every day, uh, hope, okay, anyways. <laughs> this is lyric, this is lyric that was floating around in our DMs, 
And uh, this is Phoenix's lyric, right? All credit goes to Phoenix. Well, not all credit, but... Anyways, there's a lyric that Phoenix wrote in our DMs. It's called, I work out every day. Ba 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 ba. Right? Like something like that. Buh, 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 buh. I mean, I'm just making this shit up. But like, the, the theme was like, I work out every day. And then I was like, hey, I can, I can build on top of that. Right? So I went, I work out every day to bench the gay away. <laughs> and Phoenix was like, that's some closeted gym shit, bro. <laughs> So that's an example of, uh, of, of our DMs. Um, that was a very unfortunate thing happened, and I, and I feel really bad for them, and, and this shouldn't happen to anybody. Phoenix got hacked. Yeah, yeah, some, like, you know, asshole. You know, okay, I don't want to say asshole either, but, like, some asshole <laughs> hacker, right, like, pulled one over them and, and freaking hacked their account, stole their account, and you know how Discord hackers are, right? Like they, once they get a hold of your username, password, the account, whatever, whatever, right? Somehow they run some malware in your computer. However the fuck they do it, you click a link, you type whatever. Dangerous place out there. Um, they not only like screw you over, like try to get all your information or like try to steal your money, or whatever. They go and like, like a virus, they go and do the same thing to your friends. So they were using Phoenix's account to send whatever the malware and the link or whatever to all of Phoenix's friends. Yeah, all of Phoenix's friends, but me. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Kanata, this isn't about you. No, fuck you, this is, this is my stand-up. <laughs> this is about me, and I'll show you how I make it about me right now. Um, <laughs> so Phoenix got hacked, and the hacker was using Phoenix's account to like, you know, try to phishing scam other people. And unfortunately, they were successful. Um, and one of the people uh, that they tried to tried to hack was my, our, our mutual friend Juno. Yeah. And, and Juno saw the message from the hacker Phoenix. I was like, ooh, like there's something, something going on here, something fishy, right? Like, and, and Juno was the one who told me, hey, hey, Konata, be careful. Like, we're all friends with Phoenix, right? This hacker has been hacking, you know, trying to message everybody, right? They message me. Here's the message. Right? They copy paste the message so, so that I know what to look out for. And I'm looking at Juno's message and I'm like, huh, why didn't I get that? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Like, they, like Juno and I are like practically twins, you know? Like we're both mutes, except I'm way more annoying. <laughs> All right, we both dance, except Juno's way better, right? <laughs> like, we're both human, but, like, Juno's a way better human being than I am. Like, I just don't get what the difference is between me and Juno. Like, why did the hacker hack Juno, you know, try to, like, message Juno and hack Juno? And I didn't, I didn't even get, like, a high from the hacker and from, from Hacker Phoenix, like, or the Phoenix hacker. <laughs> um... So I was very puzzled and I was very distraught and um, I was uh, very determined to get to the bottom of this, uh, this mystery. I, I put on my detective hat on and, and I put my efforts to good use. <laughs> Rather than trying to like help Phoenix get their account back, I was like, let me find out why this hacker didn't try to hack me. Because <laughs> I felt left out. Like, what the fuck, hacker? Come on, man. I'm, I'm just as good as every, all, all of Phoenix's other friends. What the fuck? Man, if I ever see this hacker, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking kick his butt. But, so, the first thing I did when I was investigating was I, I went to me and Phoenix's DMs. <laughs> right? The one I just told you about. But, uh, so, and I scroll up, I scroll up our DMs. And I, I read, because I forget, you know, what we talk about. I read and I go, oh, oh yeah, we were talking about how I was uh, getting like a $100 haircut. Right to to prepare for TwitchCon, so backstory like I back in 2019, you know, before I unmuted, right before people knew, you know, what kind of fucking asshole I really am, <laughs> um, and I was about to meet everybody for the first time at TwitchCon. One of the things I did to get myself to go was I got myself a super expensive haircut just to like boost my confidence a little bit, you know, like just so I can like 
feel good about them myself. And also, like, after, like, a really expensive haircut, it's like, oh, I got to go now, right? I can't, I can't chicken out now. I have to go to TwitchCon to meet my friends, right? So this is a whole psych psychological play. And also treating myself, right? Because I'm trying to learn self-love here. So I booked an appointment with the super crazy, expensive, like, professional hairstylist from Japan. Yeah. And I picked him out because I went to the website. And I basically found the cutest hairstylist. <laughs> And damn, he was cute. He was really cute. He was so fucking cute. Holy shit, he was cuter in person than in his photos. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can already tell. So, so he was kind of, you know, you know so, so, so the, the reason why it's so expensive is like they'll basically, I can show them a photo and they'll basically turn me into that photo, my hairstyle. Like that's like, that's amazing, right? Um, so I showed him a video of Jungkook, <laughs> and he was like, oh, hell no, no, I'm kidding. No, he was like, okay, so this is what we do. <laughs> this is, right, this is, uh, we're going to cut this short, we're going to leave this long, we're going to cut this about this length, right? Super professional, knew, knew exactly what the fuck to do, right? I was like, okay, I'm in good hands. And boy, was I in good hands, because intermittently between the cutting of the hair, he would take me to the bag, woo, and <laughs> he would go, and I would just, like, shampoo my hair, right? Shampoo, conditioner, right? Like, wash the hair, right, because like some of the cutting is easier, whatever, whatever. And as he was washing my hair, it was this, you know, really nice warm water. Um, he started to take his fingers, like, like his, his, like, these parts, like sort of like in front of the knuckle area, his fingers. And if this was my head, right, if my head was here, he would take his fingers and just like press and he would just start massaging my head. <laughs> and he was just massaging my head. And it felt so good. It felt so good. It's just like, I don't think I'd had my head massaged before, like, ever. Like, just his fingers. I just, oh, and his fingers are so smooth. Like, I've never seen, like, I don't know, like, he must moisturize, like, every 15 minutes. Like, just like just the, the it was like sex <laughs> it was like he was having we were having sex on my on my head in my hair just the massage and the his fingers just trailing down over down my head and and just how hard he'd press and then like you do the whole like the thumb right like and, and then just like push right like all the all my blood veins suddenly go wow right what the fuck right but in a good way and oh my god in in and then like when he took his fingers and just like with the towel, right, wrapped around his fingers and just like put it into my ears. Oh, I, I came. <laughs> so, so it was a very sensual experience. And afterwards, right afterwards, I DM'd all of this to Phoenix. So this is sitting in our DMs uh, as the hacker is hacking Phoenix. And... The, the, the most probable conclusion that I arrived at after I did the, my whole detective investigation is the hacker was about to hack me, right? Because I'm just as good as anybody else, right? <laughs> but they saw my DMs like, ah, super cute hairstylist put his fingers in my ears and I came and the hacker was like, ooh, I'm going to stay away from that shit. I mean, I might be a hacker, but like I got, I got standards, you know. <laughs> Stay away from this Kanata character. They're a fucking psycho. <laughs> um. <sighs> the last uh, Phoenix DM story is so. I, I do a lot of simping. <laughs> I already told you, right? TwitchCon was like IRL something, simping, getting to like simp on people, but IRL, it was great. I do a lot of simping. And one day, I was simping on this like super sexy like VR dancer video, like super sexy. And they were dancing to this like sexy Spanish song. You know, like, like Spanish song, Spanish songs are like, the sexiest songs. The Spanish language is like the sexiest language, you know? And, yeah, let me read what Tam wrote. 
Hell no! They were reading the DMs and instead of messaging you, they were like, Damn, I'm gonna get myself a hundred dollar haircut. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what happened too. <laughs> so I was simping on this video, this super sexy VR dancer video, right? Dancing this the Spanish song. Super sexy language, super sexy song, super sexy dance. Um, and I'm getting really horny. <laughs> and as I'm, you know, like watching this, this dance, uh, I'm like, I think I was like talking to Phoenix. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I brought it up and Phoenix was like, oh, um, yeah, 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 I, I checked them out before. They actually, um, they have a Twitter and I'm a boomer. I don't use Twitter, right? Like I have to like open up, you know, I have to like scroll down Twitter super fast and try to like watch whatever video I want to watch before Twitter goes, hey, sign the, sign up for the account. No, fuck you, Twitter. Fuck you and, and, and Elon. All right. But, but Phoenix was like, hey, they have a, they have a Twitter account and they have IRL dances. And I'm like, whoop, I'm there. <laughs> so I got on Twitter, right, to try to check out this, this really sexy VR dancers IRL video. And like two minutes later, um, I went back to Phoenix and I, and this is verbatim exactly what I typed, quote, my erection has subsided after seeing them dance to another genre. <laughs> I know that sounds really mean, but uh, for one thing, I promise it was because of their dance, right? Dancing to another genre. I think I might have been a little biased and it was just like the sexiness of the Spanish song. But when they danced to like a whole other genre that wasn't Spanish music, uh, I just, I just lost interest. <laughs> uh, me, me and uh, Lil, Lil Kona down there lost, lost complete interest. <laughs> um, but like, let me try to bring you into my world here. All right, I, I can promise you I'm not, I'm not that crazy. Like, haven't you ever like gotten super excited? Like, just like rewind, close your eyes and rewind back in time to like when you were a kid. And your parents tell you, hey, we're going to a theme park, right? We're going on a trip, we're going on a vacation. Hey, we're going to like Florida, right? And in your head, you go, oh my God, we're going to Disney World, right? Kids love Disney World. I love Disney World. I'm super excited about Disney World, right? I want to go to Disney World and kick Mickey Mouse in the nuts, right? Typical kid shit. And when you get there, for some damn reason, your parents took you to Epcot. That's how I felt. So rather than, you know, look, I'm an adult. I'm not a kid. A kid would have been powerless to do anything about this situation, right? You'd be at Epcot, you'd be miserable, right? You wouldn't be able to make your day better. I was an adult, right? I have freedom. I am smart, smart. I can... So, so here's what I did. So after telling Phoenix that my erection has subsided after seeing them dance to another genre, I uh, put on that 30-second uh, sub goal video of Lulu dancing IRL, you know, just to balance things out, you know? <laughs> all right, that's it. That's it. That's my stand-up. Thank you all for watching. Woo! Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.